Hi, I'm Cassie. And I'm Mariah. And this is the Cassie and Mariah Show, a podcast where two long-distance internet friends, that's us, discuss navigating their 20s through disability and chronic illness. Mariah, how's it going? I'm doing good. I feel like I've had a pretty, like, slow week. Um, but it's because every free second of my time, I've been playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's a, like, you know, new Zelda game that came out on the Switch, and I'm just obsessed. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, this this game has taken up every free second I have. Like, I wake up in the morning when I'm doing my treatments. I play this game. I get ready to go to work, get home from work. I will eat dinner and then I will continue to play this game. It's like, I love it. Usually I have my, you know, my overpressing and my weighing thoughts on me that, you know, bring so much impending doom to my life that they're not here because I'm playing my games and I can't pay attention to anything else. So it's been rather (laughs) relaxing. It's amazing how much content's in the game because there's really like... There's so much to do that and still have not like came close to completing the main story. Like I haven't done like too many side quests. I'm literally just like frolicking around and like cooking food and killing monsters and (laughs) exploring caves and just having a silly grand time. That's so fun though. I I, because it sucks if like a video game doesn't have enough to do. Like I kind of feel that way about like Animal Crossing. Like you kind of run out of stuff to do. Um, especially because it's, like, with, like, collecting all the fish and bugs and stuff, like, you have to work on it year-round or wait for a certain season, so. Yeah, like, I feel like Animal Crossing, I I have to say, like, if Animal Crossing didn't come out when it did during quarantine, I don't think it would have been as, like, monumental, um, because... There was a lot of things that Animal Crossing New Horizons lacked that the other Animal Crossing games had. Um, And I think a lot of people were also upset with, like, Animal Crossing New Horizons, where there's a lot of things that, like, came out periodically. Like, they had new updates and new downloads, whereas, like, other Animal Crossing games just had content right from the beginning. So it was, like, some people fell out of playing it. And then when they would have this new update, you're kind of like, okay, do I even want to go back to playing this? Like, am I that into it anymore? Because I get that. Like, I actually considered starting an Animal Crossing island because I got a Switch Lite. So I was like, oh, I should try maybe make a new island. But I was like, do I want? Do I really want to go through, like, all the pain of, like, starting a new Animal Crossing island? Like, do I want to terraform? <laughs> I feel like that's the fun part, though. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll add it to the games I want to play this summer. I feel like once I, like got my whole island designed then it was hard to like reimagine it after that yeah that's my you know i've seen that a lot where people on like i used to follow a lot of animal crossing accounts on twitter on instagram tiktok and they would always be like oh i'm gonna like redo my island and i'm like that's so much work like you must be really bored Right. And like, I don't know, I think it was more interesting to me when I was, yeah, watching like uh, YouTube videos about how different people uh, design their islands or just like um, doing island tours or whatever, because then you had constant inspiration. I don't know. I feel like there's a quote that's like, you are what you pay attention to or something along those lines. I'm totally butchering it, I think. But um, it's basically just like, it's so much easier to like be like I don't know like if I'm watching a bunch of Animal Crossing I want to play Animal Crossing if I'm watching a bunch of Sims I want to play Sims if I'm watching a bunch of videos about how to make music I want to make music like it's just one of those things you know no that makes sense I mean I feel like I was uh you know that's how I felt with like a lot of other like video game let's plays I would watch like I'm like oh it makes me really want to play this game but like I would not feel the drive to play it unless I was like constantly consuming content for it but I don't know I just with this game like I really like the um predecessor uh legend of zelda like breath of the wild that game came out in 2017 that was like when the switch initially came out it came out like with that game um and that game was fantastic phenomenal like it took me a year to complete that game alone so i'm assuming that tears of the kingdom will also take me like a full year to complete because of like how much there is to do which i really like it because you know it's a 70 dollars video game it better have enough shit for me to do that will last me my entire life <laughs> When I first got my Switch and I didn't really have any games yet or I just had Animal Crossing or or maybe it was before I got my Switch and I was just bored during quarantine. I think my uh, my cousins let me borrow their Switch and games and stuff and they had Breath of the Wild and um, and I really liked playing it, but I 
then I would get so frustrated when I couldn't figure out how to do something that seemed like it was supposed to be relatively simple, like cross the icy river or <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, no, I know exactly what you mean. Because there was, like, the one area at the beginning of the game, the Great Plateau, was, um, like, tutorial land. So, you know, you do everything and then you can leave. I'm sorry. Are you telling me I didn't make it out of tutorial? Yes. <laughs> Oh, Which, no. Which, okay, that makes sense, because I was stuck on the Great Plateau for, like, two weeks, because I didn't, I didn't know what to do to leave, and I just was, like, farting around, and then I was like, wait, I have to complete these shrines in order to leave? I thought it was just, like, suggested. Like, I would try to jump off the edge of the land, and then you just immediately die, because, like, you're not allowed to leave, and I was like, oh, wait, I have to do this. <laughs> I need a fucking instruction manual with video games. That's my problem. No, I get that. Like, when I was now playing Tears of the Kingdom, there's not a lot of content that's... Like, if you look up an article on how to, like, beat something in the game, it came out two days ago. Like, so, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I don't really know what to do. Whereas, like, when I played Breath of the Wild, like, I... With the time I played, it was already out for a few months. So there was all of that information out there already. So I was like, oh, if I don't know how to beat something, I can do an easy Google search. Where nowadays, I'm like, oh, if I don't know how to beat something, I kind of have to wait a little bit for somebody else to do it. But um, anyway, I also wanted to give an update because I mentioned in, I think, the last episode or the previous one about how I was starting, going to be starting cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. Um, And I just had a therapy appointment the other day, and it turns out that I'm actually being referred to get tested for ADHD because my... uh, Lack of sleep is due to the fact that I have really bad, like, time management skills, which um, is related to the fact of, like, having poor, like, time awareness. I find that, like, an hour goes by and I don't even know what happened. Or, like, I always think it takes me, like, let's say, like, 10 minutes to get ready in the morning when I when it doesn't. And it has never taken me 10 minutes to get ready. I always think I could rush everything. But then, like, While I'm doing that stuff, I'm not rushing or I'm not going as fast as I think. Um, I also, like, told my therapist about how I cannot do anything without multitasking. It's, like, I, if I'm, like, wire wrapping jewelry, I have to be watching a YouTube video. If I'm brushing my teeth, I have to be scrolling on Twitter. Like, I cannot just do an activity. I have to do something. I have to do it with, like, the supplement of something else to keep my brain occupied by. Like, that's why I'm, like, such a huge fan of audio messages because someone sends me an audio message and it's, like, three minutes? All right, cool. Let me go brush my teeth or let me go, you know, fold my laundry or something because like that is what you know I I'd rather have an audio message to listen to because it actually helps me get stuff done well and that's also like um another thing that my other friend with ADHD taught me about which is body doubling in terms of like I don't even know like logically scientifically how it works but it's literally like yeah the second I'm on like FaceTime with somebody I'm like cool I can put away my laundry now yeah we would do that we, <laughs> we literally do that like I, and you know what, it's like, oh yeah, because I'm like, I talk to you and you're talking back and then I fold my laundry or I'm like eating my dinner. Like I, you know, that, that that's like giving me the content I need to do an activity. And I'll be honest, I can't even take a shit or go to the bathroom without needing to bring my phone with me. Like <laughs> I literally get like, <laughs> I literally can't do anything without being on my phone. Oh my God. Actually, that's really, I know that how specific that thing is that you just mentioned. <laughs> And I'm just reflecting upon my life right now and realizing that ever since I've been on meds, I haven't felt the need to do that. I'm just like, huh, you're, I'm like, wait a second, I used to do that all the time, why don't I now? And I'm over here like, oh wow. It's because I can actually live five seconds without stimulation. And that's the thing. At first I was like, well, maybe it's an issue with my phone. Like, maybe it's a phone, like, relationship issue. No, I cannot, like, I mean, (laughs) I it, that part doesn't fully go away. <laughs> right. Well, I do think it's kind of like how when I am doing anything I need to have my fidget spinner rings on, um, which I conveniently don't have on today because when I was editing another podcast episode, I hear it in the background and I'm like, Mariah, you sound like you're playing with dishes. <laughs> like You're spinning your ring so loud. <laughs> um, but I just, I just have, a, I need to be doing something. Like I, even when I was younger, pre-cell phones back in the dinosaur era like I would always have to bring like a magazine with me to do something like doing my treatments in the morning I couldn't just sit there and do my treatments I would need to be like playing a video game when I was doing my treatments and like that I think has created a huge um like 
a huge thing in my life. Because, like, when I do my treatments in the morning, it takes me, like, 45 minutes. And, like, that time, I'm like, oh, I could read. Like, I could do something while I do this time. So now I'm like, I'm so used to multitasking. And I think due to that. But, yeah, so I will keep everybody updated on my um, ADHD testing. Hopefully I can... I don't know, get some meds that make me feel normal because I don't. And like my severe lack of time management makes me late to work constantly. I'm always like, I, I get up, like I say, I get up at 8am every morning, gotta be to work at 12. I'm still 15 minutes late to work every day. And I get, I have more than enough time to get ready, but like, I just get lost in the sauce. Like (laughs) whatever happens to me, it happens to me and I can't get to work. Right. And even for like doctor's appointments, like it's so bad. So that's gonna be fun to get tested. I have to see like a neuropsychologist. Um, and I'm going to be like, opening up my head, like, fix it, put uh, some good things in here <laughs> that makes this experience better for me. Yeah, well, hope- hopefully it all goes smoothly for you. Please send me your good vibes and your recommendations for meds. Because <laughs> I know that that's a whole other journey within itself. And then I also want to discuss real quick, because I mentioned it again on another episode, is like, the travel experience as a disabled person and the concept that is the airport. I live in New Jersey, obviously. And I go to Newark Liberty Airport for my flying needs. Um, So when I went to Disney uh, the other week, I went through the airport and I I was very stressed. I was very stressed about like bringing my medical equipment with me, um, having medicine with me, what am I allowed to take and what I'm not. Like it was a whole thing that really like was the forefront of my mind for like a few weeks, like planning for the trip. So during this trip, I actually registered for TSA PreCheck, um, which is like, it was very easy to do. I could, I went to like a Staples by me. Like I made an appointment online through like the government website. Um, And then I was able to find like a location by me that was like a Staples that offered it. And, you know, you make this appointment and you go and you just go right to the back. Then there's just a guy there and he's like, hey, like I do the TSA PreCheck, you know, whatever. And they fingerprint you. You fill out some information. They scan your license. I believe he had to scan my passport or it was something that was like a secondary form of um, ID. So I brought my passport um, and he took my pictures and, and, you know, things like that. And um, the U.S. government was like, looks like you have never committed a crime in your life. You're good to fly. And I was like, thank you. You're so right. And I was able to get TSA pre-check. The only downside is that it's like $80. Um, but it is good for the next four years. So it can be applied to any flight. Um, this one I got specifically is for uh, national travel. Like I cannot, if I were to go internationally, I have to get approved through, um, I, I think another like type of organization because, you know, you have to be approved for like the, con- the, other, the country you're flying to as well. So um, I just got it, you know, because thank God Florida's in the U.S. <laughs> so... I went there and or actually, unfortunately, Florida's part of the U.S. because, you know, Florida's good for Disney and that's it. Anyway, <laughs> I was able to just like have a really good uh, like airport experience with TSA PreCheck. Um, I even like when I went through the line and stuff and they scanned my boarding pass, they scanned my ID and I went to the line and I'm, you're supposed to like announce that you have medical equipment in your bag to the person behind like the, the TSA person behind the, you know, the conveyor belt and I was like hi I have medical equipment there's also medicines in here like I like allow you to search my bag if need and the guy was like ma'am just keep going and I was like okay (laughs) so I pushed my bag through the belt I didn't even have to open my bag and it was fine nothing went off which I was like holy shit like I was so surprised because they know that because I had TSA pre-checked that I'm like a normal person so I'm not gonna bring anything I could I shouldn't on a plane um And it was, like, not even kidding, like, a five-minute, like, scan through and stuff. Um, I was so shocked. I was so appalled that uh, he didn't have to pull out my, you know, nebulizer like a sewer rat and wave it around the room. Um, (laughs) And that, like, I was even able to take, like, as many medications as I needed. And I didn't even really need them in the prescription bottles either, which I thought was very helpful because usually you have to have them with your name on them and things like that. So at least I know in the future I can, you know, I don't have to bring that much like stuff with me. I only need to bring my entire supply of like my stomach medication. I really can only just bring a few pills in like a pill container and it's fine, which I was like, thank God, like 
<laughs> so, um, I just want to add that because I, I, that was a huge stressor on the, uh, um, travel and accessibility, uh, episode that we talked about. And then I never gave anybody any updates. So. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> you know what? Because I think when I got back from Disney, that week was such a flop week for me that, like, I know you also had a lot of stuff going on. So, like, we didn't really get to talk. And, like, the only time we talked that week was to record. So, you know, I feel like uh, I just was very blessed by TSA PreCheck. So I recommend if you were somebody that travels with a lot of medication or any, like, medical equipment, um, any, like, accessibility ex- accessibility needs, I would say um, it sucks, but pay that 80 bucks and get TSA PreCheck. I was going to say, it is a little funny, ironic, questionable to think that f- to actually have your accessibility needs yeah. met, you got to pay, you gotta oh, pay God, $80. don't even get me started. No, literally, like, I was so shocked. Anyway, Cassie, how's your week been? What's going on? How's you doing? <laughs> um, it's been a weird week. I feel kind of disconnected from reality to some degree. Um, I feel like I'm just floating through space and time, not in like a weird way or a bad mental health way that I'm aware of at least. Um, but um I don't know. I think I'm just a little bit on autopilot at the moment. Um Wednesday was a weird day for me and I won't even get into the details because most of it's very uninteresting it's just that all of it put together is was just a journey um things the highlight reel from that day is that I was uh I was going I was on campus I was going to class and I was waiting to cross the road and um it's very noticeable when the buses that I usually take drive by because they're the only uh, we could, you know, the, the, the people call them the bendy buses, the articulated <laughs> buses, the long buses, the big green buses. Anyway, um, so one of them was at the stoplight and was, was going by and, uh, and I happened to look at the driver and it was one of my fave bus uh-huh. drivers and she waved at me. And when I tell you, I felt like a goddamn celebrity. <laughs> I was like, this is my peak right here, right now. Um, and then when I got to class, I was a few minutes early, so I was sitting in the hallway because there's a class that goes on right before ours. And who walks out but my online class professor? And I was so pleasantly surprised because there's never been a professor in the room of the class before ours. It's like a graduate class. I think it's hybrid. And so you don't even have to like go to campus, I don't think, if you don't want to. Um, but most people do because they need help because it's a difficult class. And, um, and so we, it was just a very pleasant encounter. It's very rare that I meet my online class professors in person. And so it was just very nice and yeah, just very lovely interaction. Oh, that's so cute. I was going to say, when you said that to me during the week, I was like, that's so surprising that you knew what your online class professor looked like. But I guess, like, because you do, right, you'll, you'll have, like, Zoom classes or virtual, like... No, it's all asynchronous. Um, I I do think, though, in general, compared to my community college online class experience, PSU, and I don't know if it's just a post-COVID thing, but, like, I don't know if, like, when everyone had to be online, if that just improved the quality of online classes forever um, or what the deal is. But um, my, my experience with PSU online classes has been way better in terms of, like, um, yeah, like, she has like her picture on her profile she has a picture of herself on the main page like when you click on the class like it's like kind of about the class about her her contact information and so it's very nice because yeah you get to remember their name and that because in community college I couldn't even tell you a single one of most of my professors names whereas now at PSU it's like I know their names I know their faces even though I haven't met most of them um or like a more common thing nowadays although this specific professor ironically doesn't do this but I still knew her um is like that they post like either a short video lecture or even just a quick overview of what to expect for the week um stuff like that which is just so nice and makes you feel so much more connected even though you're doing it like all on your own or whatever um But yeah, it's been, yeah, it was nice that I could recognize her. Because yeah, there's some professors that I don't know what they look like. Yeah, I I was going to say, because even like online classes I've taken, um, they do not, like, they do not have their 
profile picture as like their picture or you, you know, there's no virtual option where you see like them through Zoom or anything. So I have, I, I could have seen them too, but I've been like, who's that guy? I, I, and then, you know, he's the professor for one of your classes. But that's cute that you saw her though. Like, I don't know. It's, I think that's very fun. <laughs> It was very nice. I mean, it was a little like you're in elementary school and you see your teacher at the grocery store, <laughs> except for obviously it makes sense that I would see my professor on the campus. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, that same day when I was uh, getting on the bus to go home, um, it was hot outside. It was like 90 degrees outside. And I get on the bus and I'm like, hmm, it is unseasonably Ooh. warm on this bus. And I'm, like, sitting there, and I am, like, okay, usually when you get on the bus and it's hot outside, even if it's barely warm outside, they've got the AC blasting. And so I was, like, huh, that's a little weird. And um, and then all of a sudden, like, the bus driver, like, asks people, like, hey, like, is it still blowing hot air back there? And that is at which point I figure out that not only is the AC broken, the heater's on when you're trying to run the AC instead. Oh. Um, and I was like, I'm going to die on this bus. <laughs> I, I, listen, I, we had the whole conversation last week about temperature and stuff. Um, but I, I can't get over it. I just, I am, I don't tolerate heat well. Um, I like, and especially because most people who ride the bus, you know, they've got, sure, even if they've got a ways to go, but I ride basically the full line. It's an hour bus ride. <sighs> I was like, I, I was like, I literally can't do this. Um, I got off after like, I don't know, somewhere between like probably five and ten stops or so. I, cause I could not do it. Um, and when I tell you getting off that bus, it felt cool outside when it was 90 compared to the oh bus i'm like it had to have been over 100 degrees in the bus it was so bad um like i will say the graphic tmi like no the sweat it was dripping off of me um it was horrendous oh my god horrible i i wonder if like after that hopefully the driver was able to take it into service because i can only imagine the pain that they're going through well and that's the thing too is because obviously the buses are so long i don't know if because like up where i was sitting at the front there wasn't like hardly any air of any kind coming out of the vents whereas at the back of the bus there was hot air coming out so i don't know if the driver's stuff up front if like it was blowing cold like if it was fine for her or not like i don't right. know um but like she was trying she was literally on the phone with dispatch the whole time like trying to figure it out like at each stop she would try different things that they were telling her to try um my the reason i decided to get off the bus is i was like i bet she's gonna have to finish like i bet they're gonna have her finish this whole route like go all the way to the end of the line like where I'd be getting off like I was like I don't think they're gonna have us like get off and get on the next bus so I did it myself I literally I got off and yeah it felt cooler outside when it was 90 and so then I just waited for the next bus um which the next bus thankfully was extremely cold especially in comparison <laughs> I had goosebumps <laughs> um and um although for some reason it was a standard length bus instead of one of the long buses and it was rush hour and it was overcrowded um but the bus driver before I got on um before he even deployed the ramp he like told everyone who was sitting in the priority seating area to basically move and give me plenty of room to get on and turn around. And I was like, that is so nice because, Slight I don't behavior. know, it can be kind of it can be kind of inconsistent between bus drivers in terms of, like, how much room they give me, so. Right, and even that awkwardness of, like, knowing that, you know, you need to get on the bus and people have to physically move. Oh, yeah, people were looking. Yeah. They were kind of annoyed. They, like, they were definitely giving me a look. The bus was dead silent. It was very awkward because when I come in, obviously, I'm facing all of them who are standing there waiting for me to get turned around and situated. So it was a, it was a bit uncomfortable, but you know what? I am learning to embrace yes. that and be like, I don't care because I'm actually having my needs met, so thank you all, you know? It's, and, like, there's no other compromise to the situation so like deal with it you know like everybody else no the only compromise would have been like if a bus driver was having a bad day they could have been like my bus is too full you know wait for the next yeah. one yeah you know it's actually like um not to like bring up disney again but i was so surprised with like how their buses are almost like the same way you were explaining they're probably the size of your standard bus they're don't they don't have, they don't have the bendy part in the middle at least some of them don't 
but it was like that where like the the um any people that needed the priority seating or anyone that had a scooter like they got on the bus first the drivers like assisted them in any way they possibly could have and nobody was allowed to get on the bus until that person was on and then you know nice. you go you know then you're like okay now you you know you have the priority seating like you're saying up so now you know less people can sit down and I do think that it's kind of I, I don't know I think some people hate that because they're like we were waiting we just want to get on the bus and it's like you can literally wait like a few extra seconds. It's not like this is taking so much longer. Um, and even I felt like, I think, I don't remember if I mentioned this when I talked about Disney last week, but like, I think the accessibility in Disney was a lot better than I thought. Like U.S. towns need to model their town off of Main Street America in Magic Kingdom because I think we would have a lot better time. Um, but yeah, I love that for you. I love that. Like the bus driver, you know, I love like just those little acts of kindness like that. And like, responsibility and authority can really go a long way for um disabled people a hundred percent and i you know when i got off the bus since i knew he wasn't going to be in a rush since he was at the end of the line um i like usually i just you know say thank you as i'm going down the ramp but um i was like hey like i really appreciate you like making space for me i know the bus was crowded you know and he was like yeah i mean i know those things like take quite a bit of space to like turn around and, and it's just like even just being aware of that, which, like, his shirt did say senior operator, so I think he's been working there for a long time, so, like, he, he's got it down, you know? Yeah, right. But, yeah, so Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday was definitely a journey, and that wasn't even all that, I mean, I did almost get hit by cars twice that day, but that's, you know, that's just a run-of-the-mill life in America, baby. Um, (laughs) not acceptable, but, uh, I still got a laugh to cope. Um, And then, yeah, besides that, um, you know, um, doing a little bit of organizing around my county commission's budget hearing next week because they're probably going to try and ruin a bunch of people's lives. Um, It's ice cream girl season. I don't know if we've talked about this on the pod, but I just feel like it needs to be formally declared that it is ice cream girl season. Can you elaborate? Are you just saying it's ice cream lover, like ice cream hot girl time? Yeah, I mean, it's warm enough out that ice cream can and should be consumed at every opportunity i am a big fan of ice cream so i get it i didn't have any like in the freezer here at home and so i just acquired oatly fudge brownie so we'll see how it goes i like the oatly ice cream oatly and what's the other one halo tops they make it with coconut milk the halo top candy bar one is goaded with the most absolute sauce like i don't think people understand how much i love that ice cream but I, I understand the coconut milk is an odd texture, so I don't really... It's, it's an acquired taste. Um, my problem is that... Which one did I try to get of theirs? I got, like, the birthday cake one or something, and it smelled and tasted like Play-Doh. And so I have simply never bought their ice cream ever since. <laughs> but if you want to spot... <laughs> I just want a lactate pill sponsorship. Is that too much to ask for, actually? Um, it's 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 ice cream girl season, but it's also lactate girl season because, uh, yeah. I mean, well, you don't have to with Oatly and such, but when I be eating my Dairy Queen blizzard, I <laughs> gotta, gotta slam that lactate pill. Dairy Queen cotton candy blizzard. Iconic. I'm learning a lot about you right what? now. What? I might be judging you. <laughs> really? God, of all things, cotton candy? I don't like, okay, here's my thing. When I have ice cream, I'm not a big, like, chocolate cookie dough type of person or things like that. Like, I, like, that's why I like the candy bar Halo Top. When I've had Jenny's ice cream, um, which I will always refer to that as Joe Biden's favorite ice cream. I remember they, like... <laughs> supplied a lot of ice cream for him when he was doing his uh like his presidential campaign um and little odds and ends information like that that i know i think is the reason why i'm pretty sure i have like adhd because i can remember that but i can't remember my social security number (laughs) (laughs) they have like one that's like a blueberry lemon cake oh shit are you kidding me fuck yeah dude it's incredible (laughs) The liberal ice cream. Big fan of that. Um, do you like ice cream or do you like Froyo? Well, I mean, I go to Fro- Fro- They're different experiences. Because I know the well, there was another podcast where you mentioned how you it was a 90 degree day or it was like a nice warm day and you went to Froyo. I probably did declare it ice cream girl season then, huh? I don't think you officially declared it, though. I think you like insinuated that it was. 
but like it's you know we need like a solid it wasn't it also it wasn't 90 it was totally only 60 degrees but it felt like 90 in comparison to the winter weather (laughs) speaking of the seasons it's squirrel mating season and you're like cassie what the fuck (laughs) um but listen we live in a forest and we've got a ton of squirrels and you know, we throw out bird seed and things on our back porch to attract the critters. And if you think that's problematic, that's not my problem. So the squirrelies be hanging up on the porch. And, um, oh my god, there's literally one walking towards my window as I speak. That scared me. They're never in front of my room. They're always in the backyard. Guys, we have a live audience. Anyway, let me just say that it's, I mean... Not only do they act different, but um, there are visible, noticeable differences um, <laughs> in the squirrels at this time of year, which was new information to me. So, there's that. Let's just say there's two types of nuts that squirrels like. <laughs> <laughs> the size. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um... Uh, on a completely different fucked up note, Hank Green has cancer, and that's fucked up, bro. That makes me so sad. I, when you said Hank Green before, I was like, I know Montana doesn't have access to TikTok anymore. And you go, Mariah, he has cancer. I was like, I, I was like, <laughs> supposed to know. <laughs> I know. Well, I just keep up with the Hank Green. The thing is, I actually read it in the, like, Hank and John newsletter before oh. I even saw it on the internet. Um, So that's how you know I'm a real Hank Green stan when I read it in email. Oh, poor guy. I wish him the best. I hope he's doing well. I, I wish, I, I'm, I'll, I hope that he will give us updates when he can, because um, now that, you know, he can't go on TikTok. I don't know how else. I mean, as if other forms of social media don't exist. As if he hasn't been a YouTuber for (laughs) 10 plus years. As if he didn't invent VidCon. (laughs) The Vlog Brothers. How could I forget? I know. Yeah. So that's, yeah. He posted a video about it and stuff. And I, I, I will say something I found really, I don't know interesting fascinating informative insightful about the video was towards the end he talked about like what he wants and what he doesn't want which i thought was very good for somebody who's in his position where like he has like an audience Mm -hmm. and stuff in terms of being like don't send me medical advice and being like um i can't remember what the other things were that oh he said he doesn't want like the whole like we'll fight this together attitude like that just like which is obviously very very common amongst like people who are fighting cancer um which like you know it works for some people it doesn't work for other people you know because like he literally is the nerdy science science guy you know he's like he's like i understand that it's up to like science and medicine and like all these things and so um so i thought that was just like really interesting to hear that perspective because i feel like from an outsider perspective of like how you see a lot of the narrative around like cancer diagnoses and stuff it usually is that so it's just interesting to see him articulate what he wants or doesn't want and um and also just that the biggest thing that he has to kind of deal with is the fact that he can't work as much as he like oh at all really uh while he's you know receiving chemo um he needs to like plan to not do anything um because he probably won't feel well enough to whereas he is just like me we are both we both can't stop doing things all the time (laughs) so um i sympathize (laughs) and uh yeah no i hope that uh hope that he's able to yeah take care of himself prioritize his health and yeah Yeah. love a parasocial relationship (laughs) i i feel like he's not okay i was gonna say i feel like he's like one of those people that it's like appropriate but it's also like it's not but like because in the sense of like you've kept up with him for so long and he knows he has a very dedicated fan base when it comes to things like this and like i do think like yeah it's important to be aware that he's like doesn't want any advice you know trust in the whole trust in the people that he's seeing trust in the doctors that he's seeing and like i guess because like there's a whole like i feel like it could there's a whole like concept around people that are like oh we fight this together and this is a together thing it's not like it's very individual it's a very like lonely uh process to go through like it's good to have support but at the same time it's like sometimes that that type of those type of like sediments can like hurt more than they help 
so yeah and i mean i kind of interpreted it as like he was saying it's just like he's like it doesn't matter necessarily like if we're all like we fight that he's like you know i'm just doing the treatment and if it works it works yeah <laughs> which the he was diagnosed with hodgkin's lymphoma which he said is like super super treatable right. like w- whatever so i don't know a ton about cancer um but yeah i don't know um it was just interesting i think that's a weird part of growing up is seeing these people you like i don't know because it's like obviously like nowadays like when like a famous person or somebody like dies or gets diagnosed with at least you know something big the health wise happens like it's usually like people who like our parents were like sort of fans right. of or knew from movies they watched growing up where whereas it's like you know for the most part unless it's like a you know young person tragic death situation like it's we haven't had to confront that yet and frankly i want to go before harry styles <laughs> you know it's interesting you say that about like people that you looked up to or like childhood people and like getting going through these like serious but in very public um like you know diagnoses or just like events um because that's kind of how, how how i almost like how i felt with like mark hoppus when he said he had cancer like or was diagnosed oh, with I cancer forgot about that that yeah. was like like, to me, that was, like, world-stopping news because, like, of being a huge Blink-182 fan, I was like, holy shit, like, yeah. Mark fucking Hoppus, like, my high school crush Mark Hoppus, like, you know, uh, the the biggest band in the world to me at the time, like, Mark Hoppus, like, I was so, I don't know, I was very, like, it was upsetting and it was also another thing of just, like, you know, he went through it, I know he's, um he beat cancer and what I thought even at the time was he had a port put in and i was like oh my god mark hoppus and i are port twins and then after i got <laughs> my port removed he got his removed like a few months later i was like so you get a port and then or i get a port he gets a port i get mine removed he gets his removed and now i'm like i really want to tweet at him and ask him if he was able to keep it because i wasn't able to keep mine but if he was able to keep his that's not fair <laughs> I thought you were going to say that he is just copying you and you are a port influencer. Port influencer. Perhaps I am. Perhaps everybody that ever had a port is, uh, um, you know, just copying me. <laughs> In other celebrity news, Joe Jonas is hot. <laughs> I just, here's the thing. I just needed the people to know because it wasn't included in the crushes episode because I simply... I don't know. It's not that I forgot. It's not that I didn't know. It's that the Jonas Brothers are doing a bunch of album and tour press right now. And again, the YouTube algorithm served me up a man. And <laughs> I accept it. And um, I just think it's fascinating how the Jonas Brothers, unlike most people who have, I don't know, been through the Disney thing, been through the just whatever, been in the industry as long as they have. Most of them look weathered. They don't look weathered. They look like they moisturize and wear sunscreen and take a shower. New Jersey men, dude. (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) It's something about the, the humidity in the air. It preserves your skin. I don't know. I don't even, like, I have no idea if they even still live in New Jersey. I just know they're from North Jersey. I trust um, it. <laughs> we should, like, we should have a... Have them on the we, podcast. Of course. I mean, like, Joe Jonas, if you want to be on the podcast, please email <laughs> Um, we The next Junk Drawer episode, we should do an update for the crushes. Because I think I could have added a few more in the other episode. Because, again, it's, like, people that weren't in my, like, peripheral... Or people that weren't in my direct vision that I was like, wait, I still have a crush on them. Like, again, Blink-22, Tom DeLong. I'm like, this man's fine. <laughs> why, why did I not bring him up on the crushes? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who else I'll have, but... Um, I'm sure you'll think of but one. But yeah, <laughs> I, I was... I just really appreciate the YouTube algorithm's ability to serve me up a man. <laughs> all respect to the fact that he's like married with kids or whatever yeah, i think he has a kid or two kids with sophie turner i don't know sansa stark from game of thrones queen well that's a wrap on this week's episode be sure to follow the cassie and mariah show wherever you listen to podcasts at tcms pod on twitter and instagram and look out for new episodes every wednesday bye, bye.